Hello, today we're going to be learning our final method of solving quadratics here. So, so far we've learned how to solve graphically, how to factor, how to solve algebraically using square roots, how to complete the square, and today's the fifth, uh, final one is the quadratic formula. The great thing about the quadratic formula, it can be used to solve any quadratic, so it does not matter what the quadratic is, when all else fails, right, if the other methods aren't working for you, this one will always work regardless. Um, this is great because we can always use it, it's a great check. Um, the reason why I'm not a huge fan of the quadratic formula is it's kind of time consuming. It takes a lot of effort. There's a lot of simplifying processes. You have to make sure you simplify correctly. So big thing here is um, you can use to solve any quadratic, like I said. So any quadratic out there, we can always solve it. And here is our quadratic formula. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All right, and we get those A, B, and C values from our quadratic equation. So go ahead and write this down. You will have to have this memorized. This will not be provided to you. You have to have the quadratic formula memorized. So now what we're going to do is we're going to practice this. So here's our first example. Um, we're going to be solving 12 plus 4x squared plus 4x equals 10x plus 3 with the quadratic formula. So just like before, I have these steps. So go ahead and pause this video and write down those steps for me. So the steps are set equal to 0. All right, you want your equation equal 0 just like we do in factoring. Up next, then we're going to write it in standard form to make sure our a, b, and c values are in the correct location. And then from there, we're going to plug in those a, b, and c values, and we're going to solve that formula. Plug and chug. So first one set equal to zero. So I'm going to move that negative ten. I'm going to move that ten x over and that three over. So I've got twelve plus four x squared plus four x minus ten x minus three equals zero. We're going to write in standard form. So we want our x squared, then our x, then our a uh, constant term. I've got a 4x squared. I've got 4x and negative 10x, which gives me negative 6x. And I've got 12 and negative 3, which gives me positive 9. So now I have my a value, my b value, which you do include those signs, and my c value. Here we're going to plug that into our formula. All right, so it says x equals the opposite of b. So my b value is negative 6, so the opposite of negative 6 is positive 6, plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared, because it's b squared, minus 4, times my a value, which is 4, times my c value, which is 9, all over 2 times my a value. All right, so we clearly can't leave our answer like this. We have to do some simplifying here. All right, so I've got x equals 6 plus or minus the square root. All right, 6 times 6 is 36. 4 times 4 times 9 is 144. 2 times 4 is 8. 36 minus 144 is negative 108. So now we have to simplify that negative 108. So I'm going to bring that over here. Negative 108. Looking for the biggest perfect square that goes into negative 108. Um, when I try all the perfect squares, 36 goes in there. It goes in there three times. And we also have a negative, so we need to pull up that negative 1. Square root of 36. Square root of 3. Negative 1 is i. Square root of 36 is 6. Radical 3 will stay the same, so it becomes 6i radical 3. And while this is a great answer, it really is, I think we can go even one step further. So I'm looking at those numbers here. Here's what I'm looking at. I've got this 6, this 6i, and this 8. All the numbers that aren't in a radical. I'm looking at those numbers. If I wanted to reduce that fraction, 6 over 8, I couldn't leave that because they have a GCF. They have something in common. I think all of those have a factor of 2 in common. So when I factor that out, I'm a factor, a factor of 2. So I've got 3 plus or minus 3i radical 3 over 4. 
So that would be my perfect and final answer because you do have to reduce those, all right? Because you have to check for GCF, so always look at those numbers on the outside of those constant terms in that imaginary term. And that's how you do the question.